Today, we are going to create this smooth warp check inside the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I will also be sharing project files in a community post, but it will be available for the channel members only. So, if you are interested, you can get it for just 29 rupees. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so here I am on the edit page and as you can see, I have already imported two clips and also added the speed ramping to them. So, before you follow me, make sure to do that. If you don't know how to do it, you can simply check out this video, okay? Now let's focus on the main tutorial. So for that, simply move the playback head to the beginning of your second clip and at this point, go to this top left section and here you will see this effects icon. Click to open it, then go to this toolbox and click on this mini arrow to expand it. And here you will see this effects section. Click to open it and from here we are going to use the adjustment clip. So simply click and drag it to the timeline, then place it where your playback head is, okay? Now what we are going to do is simply move the playback head 30 frames forward and at this point click on this adjustment clip then press ctrl plus b to make a cut now select the right side of it then press backspace to delete it now place the playback head on top of this adjustment clip and open it in the fusion page ok so once you are in fusion you will have something like this now the first thing we are going to do is create a zoom in animation and for that we are going to use the transform node so with this media in on node selected Add a transform node to it, then go to the beginning of our composition and at this point, simply go to the inspector and add a keyframe for this size. Now double click on this size box and change the value to 0.7. Click here once to apply the changes and we'll have something like this. Now move to the end of our composition, then double click on this size box and change the value to 1. Click here once to apply the changes and we'll have something like this. Now let's also adjust the curves, so go to this top right section and open this spline tab. Take this transform box, now click on the zoom to fit icon, then select the keyframes. Press S on your keyboard. Now just follow me. Take this bottom handle and move it upwards like this. Now take this top handle and drag it to the left side like this. Keep it somewhere around here. Okay? Now if I go to frame 0, then double click here and play it, you will see it will have something like this. And I guess it's looking pretty good. Okay? Now let's add the distortion first, then we are going to create the shake. So click on this transform node. Then press Ctrl plus space and search for lens distort. Press enter to add it. Then go to the beginning of our composition. Now simply go to the inspector and here you will see this lens distort model. Click on this mini arrow to expand it. Then go to this model section. Simply click here. Then go to this bottom option called PF track. Select it and we'll have these options. We're going to adjust this lower distortion and also the anamorphic squeeze. So first let's adjust the lower distortion. So click on this slider and drag it to the right side and you will see our clip has changed. But what I actually want to do is increase the distortion until it fills the empty area. So for that, simply go to the inspector once again and double click on this distortion box. Now simply type the value 20. Let's click here on to apply these changes and now you will see we have this distortion like this and it has filled the empty area. Now let's adjust the anamorphic squeeze. So click on this slider and drag it slightly to the left side. Keep it somewhere around 0.76 maybe. Now let's animate them, so add a keyframe for the lower order distortion and also for the anamorphic squeeze. Now just go to the end of our composition, then double click on this lower order distortion box and change the value to 0, then double click on this anamorphic squeeze box and change the value to 1. Click here once to apply these changes and now we have something like this. Let's also adjust the curve, so let me double click on this transform box to deselect it, then also double click on this lower order distortion box to deselect it as well. Now simply click on this zoom to fit icon. Select the keyframes, then press S on your keyboard. Now take this bottom handle and move it upwards like this. Let's move it somewhere around here. Then take this top handle and drag it to the left side. Keep it closer to the bottom handle. It will just make the animation faster. Now let's also do the same for the lower order distortion. So let me double click on this anamorphic squeeze box to deselect it. Then click on this lower order distortion box. Click on this zoom to fit icon. Then select the keyframes, then press S on your keyboard. Now this time, click on this top handle and move it downwards like this. Try to keep it somewhere around here. Then click on this bottom handle and drag it to the left side. Let's keep them closer. Okay. Now if I go to frame 0, then double click here and play it. You will see we have this nice little distortion. And it's actually looking pretty good. Okay. Now let's create the shake. And for that, we're going to use the transform node. So let's go to the beginning of our composition first. Then click on this transform node. Now go to the inspector and the first thing we are going to do is go to this edge section, click here and change the edges to mirror. Then add a keyframe for this center xy. Now click on this y box and drag it downwards like this. Let's keep it somewhere around 0.485 maybe. Now simply move 10 frames forward and at this point click on this y offset box once again and move it upwards like this. Let's keep it somewhere around 0.52 maybe. Then let's move another 10 frames forward and at this point 
we are going to click on this Y offset box once again and drag it downwards like this. This time, let's keep it somewhere around 0.51. Okay. Now, just go to the end of our composition, then double click on this Y box and change the value to 0.5. Let's click here on to apply these changes. And now, if I go to frame 0, then double click here and play it, you will see we have this nice little wavy shake. And it's actually looking quite good. But you can make it even more better by adding the motion blur. So, let's do this. Now, there are two methods to add the motion blur and I'm going to show you both of them. So, for the first method, you can simply click on this transform one node, then go to the inspector and switch to this settings tab. And here you will see this motion blur. Tick this box, then you can simply double click on this quality box and change the value to something like 30, 50 or 70, whatever you like. But keep in mind that more the value, the heavier the effect, okay? I am going to change the value to 30. Now let's also double click on this shutter angle box and change the value to something like 480. You can also change this to 720 if you like. So let me click here on to apply these changes. And now if I go to frame 0, you will see we have motion blur like this. But you can make it even more better by going to the inspector once again and scrolling down. And here you will see this option called center bias. You can simply click on this slider and drag it to the left side. And you will see our motion blur has changed. Now if I double click here and play it, you will see it's looking something like this with the motion blur. Okay, now let me show you the second method. But first, let me disable the motion blur from here. Then click on this lens distort node, press Ctrl plus stress and search for optical flow. Press enter to add it. Then with this optical flow node selected, press Ctrl plus press once again and look for vector motion blur. Press enter to add it as well. Let's go to frame 0 and you see we have this little bit of motion blur. But it's actually quite low. So what I'm going to do is simply go to the inspector and here you will see this scale option. You can simply double click on this box and change the value to something like 2, 3, 5, whatever you like. But keep in mind that more the value, smoother the effect but heavier the animation. And it actually takes quite a lot of time to render it properly. So if you have a low-end PC, I would recommend you to stick with the first method. Now let me change the value to something like 4. Then click here on stop that these changes and you see we have the motion blur like this. If I disable the vector motion blur for now, you see it's something like this without the motion blur. And if I enable it, you will see it's something like this with the motion blur on. Okay. Now I'm going to stick to the first method because my PC is quite low as well. So let me simply select these two nodes and delete them. Then click on this transform one node and enable the motion blur from here. Now let's switch to the edit page. Then go to the frame zero. Double click here and play it, you will see we have something like this and it's actually looking quite good. So that's how you create a smooth warp sec inside the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If the tutorial was helpful, then give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and make sure to watch my other videos. I will see you in the next one. So see ya.